What is up people and welcome to another video of the docker based workflow for developers the beginner's guide and in the first video I just want to recap we um, spoke about the command line how to navigate the file system with cdnls we also looked at like the current folder and working directory so the pwd environment variable and we looked at the docker volume specification how to mount source code from our machine into the container we also looked at a docker run command example and yeah so we were able to start a container and mount files into the container and this is really important for this video so what i'm going to do next in this video is we're going to start looking at how do we translate all those docker run commands um, into a docker compose so the compose file is really important because that describes our development containers our whole development environment is described in docker compose now we, i'm also going to show you guys how to enter and exit the development containers so that we can do some work we're going to be generating some sample source code and this is important if you're um, a, a developer for one of these programming languages i highly encourage you stick around um, because we're gonna i'm gonna show you how docker really lowers the barrier to entry for each of these programming languages and this helped me because i came from a c-sharp background and to pick up like golang and python was really easy for me because of of this so the other thing i'm going to show you guys is how to install um, NuGet packages, go get, npm install, pip install, and all these things that you used to do on your machine, how to do that inside of a Docker container. So this is, um, the importance of this is that we're able to decouple our local machine from our development environment so that we can produce a container image that can be identical to production. Um, and then the final thing is we're going to compile and actually run the code. So let's get into this. Okay, so if you can remember from part one, I showed you guys the docker run command for a running a development container. Now, in the real world, you don't want to really maintain like a shell script to run these commands. That's why docker compose is there. It's to basically describe these docker run commands as a YAML file. So let's take a look at like C sharp, for example. They're all actually the same, but we describe our container name, the container image. We do the working directory, which is equivalent of the dash um, W and then we also mount in our source code so what i did is each one of these programming languages i have a source folder and i mount the source folder into the container at slash work and this helps me keep my source code separate from everything else so it's nice and clean and i do these um, I add these few parameters here and this is basically to allow me to get a shell terminal into the containers once we've started it up um, and if we look at all the other container images they're all the same um, same concept I have node.js source I have python source mounted in and the only extra thing I have is a port that I open that's because the source code we're going to be generating today is for a website or, or an API um, just hello world okay so, so once we have our docker compose ready we can go and say docker compose Compose build and that will compile our entire development environment and what we do then is we do docker compose up dash d and that'll run everything in background mode so we can see we create all these containers and once they're up I can say docker ps and we can see all our containers are now running now you can see because we've specified a volume for c sharp dash source for each of these programming languages docker has gone ahead and created a source folder that's empty for each one of these um, programming languages now i'm going to show you guys how to enter the container so we say docker exec dash it for an interactive terminal and we give the container name in this case it's c sharp and we say sh so that's how you enter the container so now we're inside we can see there's nothing inside because the source folder here is empty so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to generate some source code so i'm going to say dot net new and i'm going to i'm going to make a web app and that'll go ahead and generate dot net files source code and once that's done i'm going to say dot net build that'll compile there is one quirk in .NET I have to go into the program.cs here and I just have to tell .NET to use this URL 
um, and port so that we can actually actually um, access our web server in the container so I'm gonna go .NET build again and then I'm going to say .NET run and that'll start up our web server and if I go to the browser we can see I have the website right up there um, all the pages are working and that's how you just get a .NET application up and running from a container so now I can go ahead and and change the source code I can compile and I can run it um, pretty straightforward now Golang is a little bit different you can see I have a docker file specified for Golang and I had to get a couple of dependencies so we have our docker file here and I have to install git and the reason I need git is because go uses git to get uh, all its dependencies so I say go get um, this this is basically a web server I want to install it's similar to node.js express web or python flask um, so I go ahead and do that and then I do docker compose build to compile everything again and now what we're going to do is in the source we're going to create a new file called main.go and I'm going to paste this in here and this is our our um, basic little web server that's just going to return hello um, so once I have that I'm going to exit the C-sharp container and this time I'm going to enter the Golang container now once I'm in I can do ls we can see we have the main.go here so this is really simple I can just say go build and that'll go ahead and compile our assembly and that'll give us a static um, binary called work and then if I run that we can go over and we can access it on port 5001 there we go hello it's up and running now for the node.js um, one I didn't have to specify anything in the docker file it's still um, it's blank I think that's because Express um, comes with the stuff I'm about to show you so in node.js you get this concept of package.json for all the dependencies and in here I specified Express um, I also created a server.js I got this off the um, the node.js website to start a hello world application so this is the JavaScript code that's going to run our web server so I put this all into source and I'm going to exit the Golang container and this time I'm going to go into the node.js container if I do ls we can see our files are available okay so once we have our server file and our package.json in place we say npm install that'll go ahead and install the internet and then we say npm start That'll go ahead and run it. Now it's running on port 5000. Um, remember in our Docker Compose file we bound port 5002. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to access it on port 5002. There we go. Hello world. And finally we go I'm going to show you guys the Python one. So if we take a look at the Python, um, everything's the same port 5003 we have python source inside here i have server.py so i created this basic hello world um, can, um, source code just running a web server using flask and for that i had to do pip install so if we look at our docker file i just install my dependencies a pip install flask so that's kind of how you install dependencies and then remember when you change the docker files you have to do docker compose build to co to recompile the container image and I'm just going to exit the node image and let's go into the Python and if I do Alice we can see our server.py is right there ready to go and I'm going to run the command to basically start up the server and there we go it's running so if I now access that one on port 5003 you can see it's up and running okay so what did we achieve in this video so far um, we have defined development environment inside containers which is really really cool um, this basically showed us how to you know decouple our machine from a development or a production environment so we can keep our machines clean we don't have to have all these external dependencies installed and we can really have great control over dependencies for each one of our applications that we work on especially when you're working in an environment where you're working on like maybe hundreds of different applications all the time 
um, you'll have a lot of problems with different things that you've installed on your machine. This is um, one of the cool things. Um, also, we were able to write, compile and run source code um, really efficiently and really quickly. So those are some of the things we've achieved this far. Um, next up, we will be looking at a little bit more advanced concepts. Um, a lot of people complain about Docker um, development environments that they have to go in and out of the container all the time. And also sometimes you have to rebuild the container image like a lot of the times. And there are some tools that are out there that allow you to auto reload your code so that you don't have to enter and exit the container. Um, it's basically a little service or dependency that runs in the container that detects when code has changed and it automatically just reloads the application. So we're going to be looking at code reload. Um, the other thing is we'll look at like um, debugging IntelliSense. You know, how do you get that full developer experience on your machine without even knowing that everything's running inside of a container? So those are something that I'm going to be doing for the future videos. So yeah, like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments if you guys enjoyed this and peace